Hi folks, it is reInvent week, so there is a lot going on with AWS. I hope some of you are enjoying your time in Las Vegas. I happen to be back here in Seattle, and I wanted to do a quick demo of one of the new pieces of functionality that was released this week. So uh, with EMR, uh, we announced our integration with S3 Access Grants. So S3 Access Grants is a really cool way to scale your access to data on S3, and you can either do it with IAM roles and principles there, or you can also integrate with Identity Center, which is really nice too, because you can start to grant access to different users uh, that are in your Identity Center or that you are using um, from a single sign-on perspective. So what I want to do, I've got this great blog post here. Well, <laughs> I think it's great. Um, um, only because I wrote it, uh, but this walks through a sample S3 Access Grants uh, scenario. So uh, there's a CloudFormation template here. Uh, there's actually two CloudFormation templates if you wanted to do, to do a cross-account uh, scenario. But what I want to do, I just want to show this single case here. So uh, the CloudFormation template goes ahead and spins up an EMR and EC2 cluster, and that cluster has a data writer role. And that role, we're going to use S3 Access Grants to grant access to write into a data bucket. And then we're also going to use EMR serverless, and we're going to use the new interactive uh, access from EMR Studio with a data reader role to just read the data from that S3 bucket. So not you know entirely complicated, but it should give you a good idea of what you can do with S3 access grants. So let's get started. As I mentioned, uh, there is a CloudFormation stack you can use. It goes ahead and creates all this, um, all these resources here. So it gives you a VPC, uh, a couple buckets, uh, near our cluster, near our serverless application, uh, all the stuff you need to follow along for the demo. So I've already gone ahead and spun up that CloudFormation stack. And if you look here, when you spin it up, um, I output a bunch of different information. So there is a data bucket that we use to read and write data. We've got a couple different roles here that I want to call out. There's this EMR blog, EMR serverless job role. So this is the role that you use in EMR serverless. And when you connect to EMR serverless, uh, this job role has uh, the, the permissions you need to execute commands in EMR serverless. There's also an EMR and EC2 job role. So one thing that's relatively recent with EMR on EC2 is runtime roles. So you can submit steps to an EMR cluster using a specific role. So um, your users don't need direct access to the cluster. You don't need some sort of super user role to do your uh, do your work on an EMR cluster. You can have scoped down permissions uh, that you can submit as part of your steps or even when you connect with EMR Studio. I've also got an EMR blog artifacts bucket. This is just for code that I'm going to use and logs that get written out uh, during the course of this demo. And then we've created, of course, an EMR cluster, an EMR serverless application, and an EMR studio. So uh, what I want to do, I just kind of want to walk through the steps in the blog post. So we've already gone ahead and created that. The first thing we're going to do is set up and configure uh, S3 access grants. So you need a newer version of the AWS CLI to do that. There's some new commands here, uh, like create access grants instance. So an access grants instance is just a resource that's created in your account that helps you manage all of the different S3 access grants. And then once we do that, we'll create a location. And so a location is, um, is something that you create that you associate with a specific IEM role. So when you create these S3 access grants, you create this location that's either associated with all the buckets in your account or even a specific bucket. And you associate that with a specific IEM role that has the power to read or write to that bucket. And then you can vend credentials from that location to different applications. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk through and see that. Uh, let me go ahead and create my Access Grants instance. So of course, I got my lovely terminal over here. And I'll just go ahead and create that Access Grants instance, and you can see that. And then I'm gonna create an Access Grants location. Now this location, I'm gonna scope it down to our data bucket. And this data bucket is the one that was created by the, um, the CloudFormation template here. And then I have the IAM role that I'm going to use for that data bucket. So let me actually see if I can pop open that data bucket role. So here's that EMR blog data bucket role. I'm gonna go ahead, pop that open in the console. And you can see all this role has access is this S3 access. So I've got my data bucket and that's all the role has access to is to get, put and delete objects in that bucket. So it's a really limited role, but it's tightly scoped to that bucket. So let me go ahead and create my access grants location. And then we need this access grants location ID for some of our next commands. So now that we've got our access grants instance and location, 
what we do want to do next is go ahead and create our access grants. So we have two grants that we're going to make here. We've got a read write grant that we're going to use to grant to our data writer role. If we go back to that stack really quickly and the outputs, the data writer role is this um, EMR on EC2 job role. So that's our data writer role. And then we also have, we're going to grant read access to our data reader role. So the data reader role, if I go back there again, that's our EMR serverless job role. And we see here, um, we can also filter by prefix. In this case, I'm just using the output location for both of these. But if I wanted to, I could say, okay, grant our data writer role, access to write stuff into this output, grant our data reader role, access to read stuff from this, uh, this output. And maybe we wanna grant data reader access to a temp directory or, or temp you know, prefix or something like that. We could do that as well. But for this case, I'm just gonna create these two grants. And let's see, I need this, uh, access grants location ID. So I have to replace that really quickly. And then I'll create my two access grants. So there is my read write one. And if I go here and do the second one, you can see now I have my read one. And you can see um, on that access grant, it um, outputs the grant scope as well. So you can see exactly where that access grant has access to or, or doesn't have access to. So my demo scenario one, I'm gonna run a Spark job on EMR and EC2 to generate some Parquet data. And what happens here, let me go ahead and actually just copy this, um, copy this code up and start this step. And then I'll talk about what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm gonna copy a PySpark script that I have here. This is a fairly simple PySpark script. It just generates some random weather data <laughs> um, and then writes that to a Parquet file in the provided bucket location that I provide it. And I'm going to call the EMR add steps API. So I'm going to say EMR add steps where my EMR cluster ID, I'm going to use my data writer role as the execution role ARN. And then I'm just going to submit this converter.py uh, script and tell it to write my data to this data bucket and the output location there. So that's going to go ahead, submit a step to my EMR cluster. Now back to what's happening here. Um, let's go and look at those roles again, just to see. So if I go back to my CloudFormation stack, let's look at this data writer role. And let's see here. So this data writer role, I've given it some glue access. Um, I do have some uh, S3 access directly. So there's this EMR artifacts bucket. Again, this is just for code and logs that the EMR cluster is going to write. So this just has get object and list bucket. Um, actually, uh, this for this role, for the EMR and EC2 role, it doesn't even write logs. So it's just um, just uses get object so it can get that converter.py script. The only other S3 data access it has is these new uh, get data access and get access grants instance for prefix actions. So for S3 access grants, that's going to allow um, my role to uh, get temporary credentials scoped to the S3 bucket that it has access to and scoped to the level of access that it has. So if I go back to my EMR cluster here and refresh that, it should be, oh no, the step failed. That's unfortunate. Oh, I know why. I didn't replace things properly. All right, give me one second. I just need to fix that. I'll leave this in here just for fun. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add that step again. I didn't escape my, uh, uh, my variables properly there. I tried to prepare everything ahead of time, but clearly, I missed something. So now that is pending again. I'll go ahead and expand that. You can see we've actually got our proper <laughs> bucket names in there instead of just the variables. So this should kick off here pretty quickly. And what this will do is when this runs, uh, this role right here that I just showed you, that's going to call S3 access grants. And this is all built into EMR, so you, know, you don't really have to do anything special, but that'll call S3 access grants to get temporary credentials to this data bucket so it can write the data out to the data bucket and the only um the only thing i had to do to enable this is just configure this with emr so with emr 6.15 and above there's these new uh emrfs site configurations so there's fs s3 access grants enabled uh you can set that to drew and then there's also this fallback to iim 
uh, parameter here. So if uh, you can configure this to be true or false. So if you try to read or write data from S3 and S3 access grant says, no, thank you, denied, you can fall back to IAM. So you can try whatever um, permissions the IAM role has. You know, this might be useful if you're doing some migration work or you're transitioning to S3 access grants. Um, I have this set to true here, but uh, I have it, I'll have it set to false in the, the next section of this. So let's go back to the steps here. That's running right now. And pretty soon, hopefully we should see some data in that bucket. And if I just do a quick, uh, let's see here, S3 LS, we can see uh, it's starting to write data out to that bucket. So let's do that recursively and give us some human output. Awesome. So we can see we just wrote out a single parquet file per year. You know, it's six files, 15 KB, nothing, nothing too big. Um, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned, the role that I submitted this step with didn't have direct access to that data bucket. It used S3 access grants to request access to that data bucket. So that went ahead and ran. Uh, that just finished up. And now we can see data in that bucket, which is pretty cool. All right, so next, I wanna show how we can use EMR Studio with an interactive EMR serverless application to read that data. Again, a little bit contrived, uh, but hopefully it shows you uh, how this can be pretty useful. So I need to go ahead and just do a quick configuration of EMR Studio. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch my Studio URL. Go to my EMR serverless applications. Let me zoom in here. And I need to just configure my application here to use interactive uh, endpoints. So I'll do that really quickly. Hit configure application. And then I'm gonna start my EMR serverless application. Great, that's gonna start up. Uh, I've configured that application by default with some pre-initialized capacity. So if I go back here um, and to the properties, you can see here I've got one Spark driver and two Spark executors. This is just so that when I connect with EMR Studio, uh, my Spark driver is already you know there and ready to start. So that's one nice thing you can do with EMR Serverless is have this little bit of pre-initialized capacity sitting there ready and waiting for you. So let me go over to my workspaces now. I just need to create a new workspace. I'll just call this EMR blog. Everything else can just stay as the default and I'll hit create workspace. So that's going ahead, creating the workspace uh, behind the scenes for me. And in just a minute here, the uh, workspace will open up. Oops, haha. <laughs> I need to go ahead and allow pop-ups. There we go. Thank you, Firefox, for always trying to protect me. I appreciate it. Awesome, so this is our EMR Studio workspace. Fairly typical uh, Jupyter setup here, but one thing uh, you can do is over here in EMR Compute, you can use EMR Studio to connect to different types of EMR Compute. So you can use EMR serverless applications, EMR and EC2 clusters, or even EMR on EKS clusters. So we're gonna use EMR serverless, and you can see we've got our EMR serverless application here, that's EMR blog, and I'm gonna choose a runtime role, and this is my EMR serverless job role as well. So let me go ahead and click attach there. That's gonna go and connect to my EMR serverless application. While that's doing that, um, let's look at that EMR serverless job role really quickly and see what uh, permissions that one has. So we'll pop open uh, the IM console. Again, I've got this glue access here. I've got this S3 EMR access. This is again, just for reading um, the PySpark scripts that I might have or writing logs to my artifacts bucket. That's all the direct S3 access that this role has. Again, in the S3 data access, you can see I've got my get data access and get access grants instance for prefix for my specific account. Awesome, so pretty limited set of permissions for that role and I've granted read access to that role. And so now when I connect in JupyterLab here, you can see I'm connected there and let's go ahead uh, I've got a notebook that I want to upload, so let me do that really quickly. All right, so I've got this Access Grants read-only notebook here, and let me get my data bucket from CloudFormation. There's my data bucket right there, and put that in here as a variable. So we go ahead, 
and start my uh, Spark application. So this is going out to EMR Serverless, starting my Spark application, and then I'll be able to read some data from my S3 bucket. Awesome, so my Spark session is available. Started up in 15 seconds there. Yeah, not, uh, not milliseconds, but uh, still pretty good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and read some data from my data bucket. And again, behind the scenes, EMR is going and requesting temporary access credentials to that specific bucket. The role that I'm using uh, for this notebook doesn't have direct access to that bucket at all, um, but it can go out, assume those credentials using S3 access grants and show me the data from that bucket. I can, of course, you know, run my standard Spark SQL or do whatever I want. Um, you know, 365, uh, I've got some weather data that I generated here, so you know, that's uh, the shape you would expect. Uh, as a simple example, I'm going to try to write that data back to my data bucket. But since I, um, you know, told uh, S3 Access Grants to only give me read access, you can see here the job fails. It can't write to that bucket, and you'll get um, an S3 Access Grants error there. So, uh, just a really simple example of how you can use that S3 Access Grants and um, EMR uh, across all the different EMR deployment mechanisms to, you know, limit your access to your S3 data. Uh, there was one thing else I did want to show in here, I thought, but I can't remember. Oh, um, this is also configured in EMR serverless on the application level. So if I go back to my application and click configure, what you'll see here in the application configuration is I've got this runtime configuration. Um, the key name is a little bit different, but um, you know, we've got that in the documentation. But again, you just set FS, S3, S3 access grants enabled to true. Uh, and also in this case, I've disabled the fallback to IAM. So pretty easy to, to configure that and get it up and running. Finally, the last thing I did want to show, uh, I did all my access grant configuration via the console, but we do have that available in the S3 console um, as well. So there's this new access grants section over here, and you can see I've already got my uh, access grant instance in this account. You can have um, that right there. And if I view the details of that, uh, you can see the access grants that I've created. So this is my read one for my EMR serverless job role, my read write, and I could go ahead and delete those or create new grants if I want to in there as well. So you can see there's read write access. And you can also see that if this was connected with Identity Center, uh, I could select uh, a user from Identity Center and even use that as a way to limit access. So uh, that becomes really important with another feature that we just announced at reInvent. Uh, this is trusted identity propagation. So this is um, a way that if you are you know, connecting with Identity Center or you have your identity provider connected with Identity, identity Center, uh, the uh, identity of the person that you're logging in as can be propagated to a bunch of these different analytics services. So you can see them listed here. There's already support for Redshift, QuickSight, Lake Formation, S3 Access Grants, uh, EMR as well. It's available there for EMR on EC2. So a lot of different ways that this becomes really important and helps you manage your permissions a lot better. So the only thing I didn't cover in this blog post was part two, uh, where you can do cross account access. This is pretty easy with S3 Access Grants. If you've done this before with S3, uh, I can get a little bit challenging just from the different uh, configurations that you have to do, uh, all that kind of, um, you know, cross account role granting and whatnot. But with S3 Access Grants, it's pretty simple. Um, all you need to do is in the producer account where you have the data, you just grant access to the source account. The source account or the, co the consumer account uh, doesn't even need an S3 Access Grants instance. So uh, it's pretty nice. You just use this put access grants instance resource policy that says, hey, here's my data consumer account. Just give them access to, you know, get use that um, access grant uh, functionality and then you create an access grant pointing to the data consumer job role. So pretty sweet um, and a really easy way that allows you to do cross account data sharing with S3 Access as well. So uh, hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you all enjoyed reInvent and uh, hope you have a great holiday season for all of you that celebrate. Thanks and take care.